Hello and welcome to the Cast Highlight Foundation Certificate Training. In Section 4, you will learn about application assessments and how to respond to requests for surveys and code scans. This section is most relevant to users who are application contributors or application owners within Cast Highlight. Before we begin, let's review what Cast Highlight is. Cast Highlight is an easy to use SaaS solution that performs objective and insightful application portfolio analysis. Enterprise IT leaders use Cast Highlight to collect and analyze data on software resiliency, cloud readiness, software composition, and private data detection in order to make smart and informed decisions about their application portfolios. Cast Highlight's application portfolio analysis is executed in three simple steps. Step one, configure the campaign and launch to key stakeholders. Step two, responders will answer a few survey questions and use a local agent to scan the code of the application. The code never leaves the safety of the company because only the statistical results are used. Step three, after all the data is collected, the leadership or enterprise architecture team can use CAS Highlight's powerful analytics to analyze the data and prioritize actions. Now, back to our training session. Let's get started. As we learned in Section 4, as a responder to the campaign, contributors will receive an invitation email like this. Simply click the link to open the campaign to begin the response. The application scan screen provides a list of applications to which we must respond to. In this case, there are six applications. Remember, each campaign can have different response requirements. They vary between survey only, code scan only, and both survey and code scan. In this case, both of them are required. Let's start with the survey. To start responding to the survey, click on the survey button next to the application. Cast Highlight out of the box has a variety of different surveys. In this particular example, we'll take a look at the Software Maintenance Estimate Survey, Cloud Readiness Assessment, Application Links, Application Properties, and Business Impact. Let's start with the Software Maintenance Estimate Survey, which seeks to understand how the application is maintained. The first question asks for the CMMI level of the organization which is the capability maturity model that describes the degree of formalization and optimization, the process on a scale of 1 through 5, which corresponds to the maturity level of the initial to optimizing. The second question asks about the percentage of development efforts spent over the last 12 months. In this case, evolutions are specifically excluded. What's included is the work dedicated to corrective, adaptive, perfective, and preventative activities. Next, what is the average skill level of the development team that works on this application? Are they brand new or are they seasoned veterans? Then, what is the annual staff turnover on this development team? And lastly, the percentage of change of the code base for the last 12 months. This is a number that can typically be calculated from looking at your source code management tool. It is calculated by adding the total lines of code created plus the lines of code modified, then taking the result of that and dividing it by the total lines of code in the application. And with that, we can save our answers and we'll complete it with the software maintenance estimate survey. The data that is entered into the software maintenance survey feeds a variety of different dashboards inside CAS Highlights Analytics. The software maintenance estimate dashboard, which actually compares actual effort versus recommend effort computed by the Kokomo 2 estimation standards, provides a good view of how your input compares to industry standards. The application details side provides a view of where the differences are by each application. 
let's return to the survey. The following section is called Application Properties and focuses on attributes describing the application. First, the application owner needs to be identified. Then, the year of when the application was initially deployed. Whether the application is commercial or off the shelf or a blend of both and the business purpose of the software needs to be entered. Once we're finished, we can save our answers. The pieces of information collected through the short application properties survey enables Cast Highlight to represent groups of similar functionality. Here, applications with overlapping functionality can be easily spotted and inspected. Application properties are also used in a variety of different areas within the Cast Highlight Analytics. For example, the application benchmarking section. Let's return to our survey and take a look at the application links portion. The application links portion of the survey allow users to indicate relationships or dependencies between applications and components. This information is extremely helpful in cloud migration and modernization projects. It is also generally good hygiene to document these dependencies in any portfolio assessments. To complete this section, first, look at the type of connection between different components and applications. Then, simply choose the component or applications incoming or outgoing links. These allow relationships to be established and recorded in CAS Highlight. The results of the application link survey allow users to visually understand wider system links in the application links dashboard. Each application has details on how the dependencies and connections and links are made to other components in the wider ecosystem. Let's move to the next section called Business Impact. This section collects concrete data to assess the importance of this application to the business. The key questions are the number of major releases over the last 12 months, whether this application is in line with the company technology roadmap, what is the average number of full-time equivalent resources that have worked on the source code, does the application serve internal or external users, and their approximate numbers. The remaining four questions are meant to qualify the impact in case of software or system failure in production. Will it harm the public image of the company? Would it lead to loss of opportunity or even loss of revenue? After we're done, we'll save our answers. The business impact metric is key for several dashboards. The one we're looking at allows users to evaluate business impact against software resiliency, software agility, and software elegance. The business impact metric also helps with calculating the overall ranking of risk for the particular application within your portfolio. Let's return to our survey questions and take a look at the final survey, the Cloud Readiness Index. The Cloud Readiness Assessment is the combination of a survey and a code scan. The Cloud Readiness Survey section aims to capture information that we cannot derive from analyzing the source code. This section addresses several dimensions like the target cloud workload, the way that data is consumed, how the application is exposed to others, authentication mechanisms in place, the current SLA or service level agreement, the level of skill on the team when it comes to cloud technologies, the database type of this particular application, the relationships of this application beyond its current boundaries, and the type of implementation of the application, whether it's single tenant, a hybrid, or a multi-tenant application. Also, what is the level of automation for this application? What is the deployment, whether it's a desktop, a web, or a mobile application? And lastly, what is the delivery model? Is it a continuous delivery, a waterfall, or an agile development delivery? Let's save our answers. All the answers from the Cloud Readiness Survey contribute to the computation of the overall Cloud Readiness Index. And of course, the Cloud Readiness Index is leveraged in several dashboards at the portfolio level. 
Here we can see cloud readiness index juxtaposed against business impact to provide a good benchmark of where different applications stand within the portfolio. The results of the cloud readiness index is also displayed at the application level. Some quick reminders as the survey section of the response is drawing to a close. Users can save the survey at any time and resume later. The survey, however, must be completed prior to submitting the overall results. The survey will arrive pre-filled with the same answers the next time the application is to be assessed. In other words, the app owner or contributor won't have to start from scratch in the future. Instead, they will just quickly ensure that the information is all up to date. Now that we're done with the survey section of the response for this application, let's take a look at how to perform a code scan. Before any results can be uploaded, the highlight local agent needs to be downloaded to the user's desktop. After the agent is downloaded, launch the wizard and follow the directions. Accept the terms and set the installation folder. Install. Once the installation is complete, the local agent can be launched. The Cast Highlight local agent scans the source code of the applications. As a starting point, the root directory of the source code should be entered. For distributed applications, the user may define as many folders as they need to to cover the entire scope of the application. In this example, we will use the root folder of a small Java JavaScript application. Once the folder has been properly selected, click Discover Files to trigger the initial analysis. The agent has now automatically inventoried all technologies found across the directory. Expand the root folder for visibility into the individual folders and the attached technologies to each particular folder. The user can now select which files and which folders and technologies to include and remove any files that are not necessary for the code scan. The next step is to trigger the actual code scan. The local agent will scan the source code regardless of technologies. Once the scan is complete, we can validate the initial analysis. During the scanning process, the local agent will also identify the frameworks in the directory. Category 1 stands for frameworks that are used for sure. Category 2 are frameworks that might be used based on the config files but were not discovered. Category 3 are frameworks that has not been identified, allowing the user to add them manually if something was missed. Click Confirm Frameworks to finalize the analysis. Now we can save the results file to continue. Note that at this point, the local agent has not sent any information to the Cast Highlight platform yet. Everything that's been performed thus far are all done locally. While saving the results, the user can open the parent folder and review the individual files. One file contains the discovered networks during the analysis and another file for each technology. When we open and inspect the Java file, for example, we can see that it's only the results that are contained within. There is no replication of the source code. Now we're finally ready for the upload. Let's go back to the campaign page and begin the upload. We can drag and drop the file in here, or we can click to browse and find the file through the folder search. Now that the upload is finalized, let's quickly summarize. The survey is complete. The code scan results have been uploaded. We are now ready to submit the results for this application. Click Submit to trigger the upload. If we refresh the page, we will see that the original application that's been responded to is now gone, and only five apps remain to be completed in this campaign. Going back to the Home menu, the newly updated app is now included in the consolidated results of our newly onboarded application. From the application ID card, users can consume analytics like code insights, the benchmark, and even the detail of the Cloud Ready Index. With that, we conclude Section 4 of the Cast Highlight Foundation Certificate focused on application assessment. Thank you for watching.